Young people, don't lose the faith. Young people, don't lose the faith. Hang on in there. God bless everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. As I give God the honor, the glory, and all the praise, I want to talk to the young people for a minute in this video. And it don't matter who you are, what color you are, looking at this video, my brothers and sisters around the world. I'm here to give some encouragement to the young people for a moment because I deal with a lot of young people a lot, uh, especially when I'm out. And really when I'm at church, I deal with a lot. And I love to see how some of our young people are growing up, young women turning into older women, you know, watching boys become men. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But at the same time, the young people are hurting my brothers and sisters. We know we all are going through but the young people are dealing with some stuff, especially to my young people in their teens and how some of y'all are ready to give up on um, church, stop going to church, you know. And I'm sure we all can relate to this, or some of us can relate to this, when we all go through that little stage in life. And I want to bring some encouragement because... I've been talking to a lot of young people, um, young minister of music, young women in the church, teenagers, you know, growing up. And some of them are so discouraged. Some of y'all are so discouraged behind the mess in church. And I understand exactly where you're coming from. I know what, you, I know what you're talking about because I went through it myself. And I'm still discouraged behind a lot of things that I see in most churches, you know, around in this world. I done been to a lot of churches, and I go to a lot of churches, and I'm not just saying it's about one church. I know every church got their problems, and but if you address issues and handle them off top, you, you, can, you can have your church in order because there is no such thing as a perfect church because we are not perfect people, but you can perfect what you do and keep that mess in check. You got to address it. Sit people down when they ain't right. But the problem is we see, you know, a lot of preachers are standing for what's wrong. So I want to tell y'all in this video, I know what you're going through, but don't lose the faith. Hang in there. And I, it hurts my heart. I, I'm going to just be real in this video. It hurt my heart to see so many young people losing faith and got so many questions on why the church doing this, why are people like this, the one you look up to, uh, they steady falling and getting in trouble and, and they supposed to be leaders. You know, question on top of question. And it's hard to look a child in the eye and tell them about what's really going on sometimes according to what somebody else has done that they look up to. But we still must stand and, and tell the truth. But it's not just the youth. It's some older people who are about ready to give up, losing faith talking about giving up on God, but I'm here to tell you, you got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. We are living in those times that the Bible talked about. And I hate it with a passion that a lot of truth is not being spoken in church. Young people, just feel me in this video for a moment because I'm reflecting back when I was your age, especially when I was about 17. I started playing in church when I was 15. When I got around 17, 18, I was really discouraged a whole lot about church. That's why I know where, you, where, you, where you're coming from. And I'm going to stand here in this video and, and tell you, you got to, you can't let what people do affect your relationship with God, even if it's your own parents. Because a lot of y'all that I talk to are really at that low point. JT, why should I even go anymore? One, one youngster told me the other day he don't even want to sing in the choir because he tired of the gay director. That hurt my heart, man. A couple of weeks ago, I was I was at a, a little musical and a, a, a young lady, she, she was asking me, why is it that the pastors don't check these leaders? Why is it they are not set down? Why is it the church just seem like they're concerned about money? And it hurts my heart when I heard a young person ask me questions like that. And y'all know me. I'm not going to bite my tongue. I tell them the truth. See, when you think about how it's supposed to be taught in the home, we are so far away from this. 
I, I talk to so many young people that tell me that, man, they don't talk about the Bible in our house. Never did growing up. And as you get older, that really does affect you. I see a young young people right now losing so much interest in going to church. I know a lot of young people start leaving the church during their middle and high school years, we could say. And we also see where some leave during their college years. I know most young people, when they are in their, we could say about 20s, some even 19, 18, they become spiritually disengaged. And what's even sad on top of all this, we got so many people, these, these old religious folks that's been in the church, running the church for so many years and don't want to allow the young people to do nothing because it ain't, it ain't the way they want it to be. Our young people are going through so much, they need to be in the church. But young people, you got to hold on. You got to keep your head up and stay focused on the Lord. And it's understandable because a lot of kids go away for college. We understand that and be out of town. But there's so many young people fed up with the mess they are seeing in the churches. See, I feel, let me let me talk about me for a moment, because I felt the same way, like I said, when I was younger. And when I was about, I say, 22, I was ready to just quit church. I got very discouraged behind all the mess. The teachers, the leaders, the one that's supposed to be teaching right from wrong and showing us by an example, the main ones, with all the sin committing adultery, messed up, preachers getting busted with other women, deacons messed up. It's just deacons horn around the church. I got so fed up with all this stuff, and it looked like everybody that I know at the same time was going through the same mess at their churches. And I started wondering, God, where is the good churches at? Because we got a whole lot in the community, but, well, I mean, what's going on with them? Like I said, I started playing when I was 15 years old, and, and and I got to the point where I was just ready to quit, brothers and sisters. When I left my home church, that was the best thing I done. And I know they looking at this video, and I don't care. That was the best thing I done was got out of the family home church. That's when I started growing. But to get some true teaching, I had to, I had to really get get in this word myself. I told y'all about this before. I had to, I had to get outside of these raggedy church buildings. Not all of them. These raggedy. When I say raggedy, these jacked up bootleg preachers that everybody wanna wanna be a preacher now. Everybody wanna lay hands. I, I had to get out of these kind of churches and learn the word for myself. And when I started really learning, I had a whole new outlook on life. God changed me, and I used what I went through that was negative. I learned from it, and I learned how to be positive. Because one thing I don't want to do is play with ministry. So young people, I know where you I know where you at in this video. I started growing when I got out of some of these buildings. Especially my home, let me just say, really my home church. I done played in some messed up churches. I, you're not going to miss me. I done played it pretty much. I, any, any religion you can name, any Baptist, Pentecostal, you go down the road, I done played at it. And I always say this, we cannot forget about the young people in church. Young people need the word of God too. God, word of God too. Young people, let me tell you something. This word of God, these scriptures alone can give you the answer to all of your problems. There is nothing you going through, nothing I have went through that's not already laid out in this Bible. And we have to apply these scriptures to our life. Because as you go away to college, there's going to be some things you're going to have to stay away from. Most people, well, let, me, let, me, let me really speak about our race. Most of us, nine times out of ten, go off to college and become drunks, potheads, weed smokers. All in becoming party, 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 but not everybody. But most black men that go to college come back stone cold drunks get, got to get high all the time and they got so busy partying that they never did really learn nothing some done dropped out of college never went back and now they looking back over their life saying I wish I wouldn't have done it that way you got a chance to do it right my brothers and sisters do it right and you need this word of God Paul said how can we believe when they have not heard I know a long time ago I wasn't hearing the truth in church and it bothered me back then and it bothers me right now how many messed up churches and preachers I see. How can people get saved if the church is teaching false teachings? 
How can people get saved if the leaders are not even saved and delivered? I'm thinking about my boy Chase in this video. I got your email the other day, and I was going. That's why I was waiting to do a video like this because I want to. I want to compare you to what I see on on the uh, what is that BET now TV one one of those channels. Case is case you about uh, what did you say you was about eighteen and nineteen now, and you are being pressured by your parents. Who are preachers? Your dad is a bishop, and they want you to preach next. We, oh man, we hear this all the time. And you got other dreams in life, and you got goals in life. See, I can relate to that because everybody always telling me, "Oh, you, you gonna be the next preacher? You gonna be over the church? You gonna be over the no?" See, I, I, I'm cautious. I don't listen to people. I listen to God. This is why we got so many people in the pulpit now. We got so many prophets and, and evangelists now because everybody want to be a preacher that I know. Well, Jero, you next. You know your uncle, your uncle Tommy Lee Thompson is a proud. Your uncle Sam is a proud. So on and so on is a proud. So what? Does that mean I'm supposed to take over the church? Brother, I fear you. Just because you can pray, just because you can sing, that does not qualify you to be a bishop, a preacher. A lot of people I know can preach, they can sing, but they ain't living now what they talking about. And that's why I don't get caught up when people running up in my face telling my oh man, you missed your call, and I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. And God is using me just as I am. You being pressured by your parents. I know I know what you're talking about in this video, brother. I mean in your email. Cause like I say, let let me I wanna I wanna State the fact what you're going through with, with uh, what's this show out now called? The Shears, I believe that's the name of it. Yeah, The Shears. We all know Kiara Shears and uh, Karen, the mother, which is one of my favorite singers, and then the, the bishop, and then the brother. When I think about that show, I was glancing the other day through the TV, and I just happened to just see that on, and I looked at it. That was my second time looking at it. And like I say, you remind me of this because they want him to be the pastor, the bishop next. And his daddy is, is really, he, he really don't like what the son is doing because what I like about the son, he said he got his own dreams, his own goals. And so many bishops and preachers and pastors, first ladies, they want you, they want their children. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But see, everybody is not going to be a preacher. And the biggest mistake people are making is when they're forcing their kids to be something they really don't want to be. This man, young man, want to live his own life. He loved being in the studio. He loved life outside of church. And you can tell that the, the, the church done, done got, to, got the best of him. Because when it comes to him doing what he want to do, they got a problem with it a lot of times. And that's what you are dealing with. And it's it's it's... It's, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but it's so many parents trying to live their life through their children's life. That's real. Not everybody's doing this. See, I, didn't, I wasn't called to be no bishop. I wasn't put over no church neither. And like I said, I have many people in my family. I always own me about that. Even people I run into that I went to school with, hey man, why you ain't, why you ain't got no church yet? Why you ain't laying hands on people? Why you not doing this? Why you not doing that? Because I'm doing what God told me. Some people are, are, are so caught in wanting to be popular, wanting to make the money. See, I'm not in it for that. I'm in it for the salvation, teaching about the lost soul. I mean, teaching and, and going after the lost souls, my brothers and sisters, because I'm concerned, excuse me, so that's why when I looked at that show and I looked at how a young man, Kiara's brother, want to go out and do his own. I forgot his name. Y'all forgive me. But he want to do his own thing, but they steady telling him that it ain't really what he's supposed to be doing. Just like me. Oh, brother, you don't supposed to be playing at the weddings and all that stuff. Why you playing R&B music? Why you producing? Why you, why back then, why was you hanging with them rappers? This, that, such, such, that, because this is my life. You live in yours. I live yours. Let me live mine. That's one thing I loved about my mama. They, mama and daddy didn't pressure Rose. 
Daddy love when I play R&B old school. Me and Daddy can get in the room right now. Now we got some people in the family that's very religious. They don't want to hear it, but I don't. I don't really associate with them because that's they jacked up boy in life. See, I'm doing exactly what I want to do, and I love it, and I'm serving God. And here's the thing about me: you don't see me drunk. You don't see me running women. You see me in church. You see me outside of church. You see me on the streets. You see me reaching out. Can we? Can we? Can we talk about what's real? You don't see me living a messed up, sinful life. So I turned out, okay, you know why? Because this word of God right here. I wasn't trying to go this long in this video, but I don't know who I'm talking to in this video. I got to be obedient, my brothers and sisters. This is why teaching have to start at home. See, really, when you think about it, by the time the average child leaves home to go to college at age 18, he or she really have never read the Bible. But look at how many hours a day teenagers spend looking at TV. Hmm. And you wonder why is it your young daughter know every dance that come out? How is it your son know all the lyrics to every rap song? He know the latest dance. Well, look at TV and look what's on it. Look at the internet. That's where most of the teenagers' time is being spent. So when they're at school, at lunchtime and everything else, they, they know what the next dance is. They can dance. They can rap. Because that's what the time is spent on. I, let me say this. I, I hate to say this, but I got to be real. This is why most black teenagers hmm, are so caught up in the R&B, the rap. Do I have a problem with R&B? Not really. I do have a problem with some of the songs that is out. Because some of them just, you, you know how it is. My point is, why is it the word of God is not spread in the house? We can spend all the time listening to that Beyonce and, and all this other stuff, but we don't spend no time with the word of God. Hmm. That's why I say this is why most black teens, especially young women, just cut on YouTube, Look at how many young women popping their tail in the, in the screen. Some of them mamas on there with them. Most young girls are very fast now. Young men are too. Ain't gonna leave the men out, women. Young men are, are at that age. As grandma used to say, they're getting too big for their britches. Are you smelling yourself? And they're curious. They want to know about sex. They want to know about all sex. They want to feel it. It's, it's that time, that age. And here it is, the church, the church don't even want to talk about it. Teach it at home. TV got so much messed up stuff on there. The internet do. That's why, like I said, most teenagers are going to know the latest dance. All the lyrics, because that's what they spending their time on, not the word of God. And then the sad thing is so many teens see, done saw so much mess in the church as they done got older, now they really don't want to be in the church at all. See, let me go back to the Old Testament before I close. If you remember Moses, in the Old Testament, Moses, he stressed to his people the importance of teaching children about the Lord and his commands, decrees and laws. Teach them hmm, to your children. That's what Moses was telling them, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, pray with your kids. Show them how to pray. Teach them how to pray. Show them the word of God. When you get up, thank the Lord. Teach them the right way. The Bible says in the New Testament and the Old Testament how to do this. God Almighty. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they shall not depart from it. My brothers and sisters, don't give up. Hang in there, don't lose faith. It ain't about what your parents want, really. It's not. It's about what God wants you to do, what God needs you to do. You might not be the next one to be put in spot as bishop. <laughs> you might not be the next big singer. You, 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 you got to let people live their life. It's their life. Once a child gets to that age, 
18, 19, and going up and up. It's their life. That's a different ball game when you're living up and up up under mom and daddy's roof. You see, you ain't really got no choice. But when you are living on your own, see, I left the house at age 18, and I never went back. And I thank God I, I got out here on my own and learned life and, and, and went through my own mistakes, learned what to do, learned what not to do. We all going to make our mistakes. But what I love about it is my mom and daddy was still encouraging me to move on. Son, you done made your mistakes. You learn, you live. You live and learn, I mean. You're going to make some more mistakes in life. But it's up for me. It's up to me to make these mistakes and learn from them. Mom and daddy can tell me all day long what and what not to do. But see, mom and daddy also made their mistakes. So as a child, I'm going to make my mistakes. And I got nothing but the utmost respect for my parents. But when it comes to my life, my parents can put in some input, but I got to live this life. Hold your head up. Don't lose faith. Keep your faith in God. And if you do leave the building, always remember you are a part of the body. See, I'm saying this because so many have already left the building. Remember that you are a part of the body. Keep God with you. Do his will. Respect yourself. Love yourself. Respect others, even when they don't want to respect you. You do the right thing, and I know it's hard. So with that being said, for God we live, for God we die. Amen.